everybody for joining this uh, webinar today. I'm going to talk about the uh, how to do business with the city of Baltimore using the uh, city's purchasing system. Um, let's move on to slide two. So our mission statement states that providing city agencies best value products, services, and support through leadership, innovation, and fiscal and fiscal awareness. Uh, the Bureau of Procurement through Baltimore City by that what is our online marketplace for doing business with the city of Baltimore, which means that if you want to do business with the city of Baltimore, you must be a registered vendor on our website on BaltimoreCityBuy.org. It takes about five minutes. If you go to the website, click on register in the top right hand corner, it takes about five minutes. I do encourage everybody um, if you provide a product or service to select as many commodity codes that you can, even if it's not uh, specific to what you provide. Um, agencies may use a different NIGP code because that's what we use for our commodity codes and when we're putting uh, bids out for advertising. Uh, we use CityBuy to post all new procurement requests and all vendors interested in participating should register at BaltimoreCityBuy.org. Members of the public can also view our most recent listings of bid opportunities on, on that website. Um, in order to bid on any solicitation with a bid, pretend must register as a supplier and a vendor in the system. For assistance regarding or questions relating to city by, please contact our help desk. Um, the best way to get your questions answered is to send an email Right now, we only have one person that's working that helped us, and she's responsible for all 600 end users and all 40,000 vendors that are currently registered with CityBuy. Also, uh, before I forget, I'd like to let everybody know on every second Tuesday of the month, um, you can, um, we offer a vendor CityBuy training. Uh, from like nine to nine to eleven, so you can send the help desk an email, and they will get you registered for the training. Uh, the BOP works closely with the Minority Women's Business Opportunity Office, which we call MBU, to ensure contracts are inclusive of MBE and WB participation. So, what happens is happens in our department is any solicitation that's over fifty thousand dollars will be uh, sent to the EMBU office to set goals for MBE and WBE participate participation. Prime contractors seeking MBE and WBE firms or subcontractors are, are encouraged to utilize EMBU directly, which can be found at this website. For more information on the Minority and Women's Business Opportunity Office is, is, and its role at the, BO, at the Bureau of Procurement, please contact, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Shella Miller, and she can give you all the information that you need is getting registered or certified as a MBE or WB with the City of Baltimore. And even if you're a, uh, you're certified with the state, or any state that you're in, you still must register and be certified with the city of Baltimore to be considered as MBE or WB on a solicitation. You can visit the procurement website, which is listed right here. If you, like I said, we do training every second Tuesday of the month. If you visit this website, our procurement.baltimore.gov, there is a training tab that you can click on to request vendor training. And like I said before, um, it's done every second Tuesday of the month. I do teach that class. Uh, view all, uh, you can view all current contracts. You will be able to see its expiration dates and how many renewals are still pending. You can use this information to be prepared to bid on the next contract. So on that website, there's a tab that says current contracts or contracts list. And what that list has, it has a list of all the current contracts that are in place at this point and it shows when they're um, going to expire. It also gives you the MBE and WB goals listed. It's a very good list to use so that, like you said, you can be prepared for the next time it's coming out for bed. 
register with the city of Baltimore. It takes about five minutes. Like I said earlier, you can go to the BaltimoreCity.gov and click register right there when you get onto the home page. As I said before, I do encourage you guys to put as many commodity codes on your uh, account as possible. So, uh, for example, and one thing I teach in the class is when we get to that section, um, the maintenance section of your account, when ask for your commodity code, say if you are if you provide cleaning, um, you would type cleaning in that keyword search, and I would advise you to put every uh, NIGP code that comes up for cleaning. Uh, like I said, you never know what what eight what the agency what NIGP code agency is definitely going to use um, and some of the codes are not actually specific to their needs so they're going to pick something close to it so that's why I advise make sure you use all of your uh, commodity codes that you can and it's and it's, it, it's, it's better to do that because um, it's easier to delete an email if you get a notification from city by saying that we have a bit solicitation out and if it's something you can provide it's easier just to delete the email in the midst of notification. Uh, one other thing I would like to say before, um, so many different things I have in mind, can't think of every scenario, but one of the main things I want to let uh, if you do, vendors know that if you do have a contract with the city of Baltimore, um, please make sure that you do not provide your products or services without a valid purchase order. Um, that will delay your payment. Um, uh, your, and that valid purchase order must be uh, referenced on your purchase order in order to get paid. That's a very important note to have. You must reference that valid purchase order. You should not be taking calls from an agency um, to, to provide products or services without a valid purchase order. Your payments could be delayed up to three, three months, 90 days, 120 days. So, but if you guys have a lot of capital and you don't mind, um, feel free to do that, but you should not be taking orders over the phone. Uh, frequently asked questions, uh, current upcoming procurements and forecasting. Right now we're under construction to create a forecasting tool so we can kind of let you guys know what's gonna be coming up. Um, like I said, on that requirements list or that contracts list that's on our, our website, you can kind of see what what um, contracts are going to be renewing. You can see what's going to be any expiring, and what's going to be coming out again. But for new procurements, we we're working on a tool that we're going to be um, sending out to the agencies so that if if they have something that's coming up, um, we can kind of put that information out on the website. Um, the contracting vehicles uh, we use cooperative contracts. Uh, RFPs and IFBs, request for proposal, um, invitation for bids. Uh, top current, uh, current top five contracts we have is with Motorola, um, or gasoline and diesel, which is like 19.4 million, waste and wastewater processing, and plumbing and heating repair services. Those are the top contracts, spending contracts that we have at this point. Uh, some more frequently asked questions. What are the top NIGB codes that we buy and purchase? Uh, of course, it's office supplies, medical supplies, first respond, first respond equipment, IT, and office furniture, industrial. Industrial, commercial, and professional equipment and supplies, copy machines, including parts and accessories, uh, truck maintenance and repair, heavy um, uh, truck maintenance and repair, heavy heating, air conditioning and ventilation maintenance repair and installation services. Um, those are the, uh, out like the top NIGB codes. But we don't use NAICS codes, we use the NIGB codes in city by. Supplier resources. So um, to get registered in city by if you have it, um, this is our website. This is where you can go to city by to register. If you need support, this is the email address, I mean, website for that. Um, we also, anything over over $50,000, which is considered a formal solicitation, is advertised in email and marketplace. It's also um, advertised on Sun Paper. 
Um, it's also advertised in MBU directory, the Baltimore City Source Link, uh, Bureau of Accounting, and Payroll Finance. These are the different links. These are the different suppliers, resources that you can use. Um, this is where you would send your invoices. Uh, invoices um, depends on the contract, um, but 90, 99% of the time you are sending your invoices to uh, Bureau of Accounting. Um, agencies should not be receiving invoices unless it's a situation where you're sending a summary invoice and we bill, you guys bill us at the end of the month and we create your purchase order at the end of the month, like lawn mowing and towing on certain things that we don't know what's going to be actually used that month. Any questions at this point? Hi, Kevin. Yes, we do have a question. This one is from Alexander. And he asked, does the city have opportunities for SDVOSB certified companies? Excuse me, could you say that one more time? Does the city have opportunities for SDVOSB certified companies? I have no idea what that is, but um, everything, all bids are, are listed in city by. Um, so all the opportunities that you can see when you go to the website, even if, even if you don't have an account, there's a there's a link on the city by thing that you can look at all this sections and see what the city is uh, requested. Okay, he added service disabled veteran owned small business, and I think Alphina, are you trying to say something? I did. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I have okay. a lot of there's a lot of noise in the background. I can I can barely hear what you're saying. Okay, go go ahead, Alphenia. The question about what the acronym was that the gentleman was referring to, but he uh he stated that is for service disabled veteran owned small business. So does the city have any set asides for veterans? Uh, no, all contracts are advertised on city by. So anybody can, and if you see something on a, uh, a bid solicitation on there where you can provide those products or services, um, you're, you're more than welcome to bid on it. Okay, follow up question. This one is from Ludovic who asked, does the city have opportunities in information technology? Yes, all of those will be advertised through city by. So any opportunities you guys are looking for, you can always check city by on the home page to see what bid opportunities are out there. Um, all opportunities are submitted through city by. So every request that any agency requests or any bid opportunities are listed in city by. There is no specific um, link for special for special opportunities. They're all listed in city by. Thanks, Kevin. We have a question from Raphael who asks, "What are the average net payment terms?" Uh, net thirty. Uh, when you register on city by. Um, you, and you set up your account, you can put your preferred net 30, which most vendors use, or if you offer a discount, 2% 10 days, um, and the city will uh, look at your account and take advantage of some of your, uh, some of the terms that you guys would have, but I think it's 2% and 2% 10 days, um, and, uh, 5% uh, 10 days also, something like that. But when you go to register, you'll be able to set up your terms and conditions when you set up your account. Okay, thanks, Kevin. That's all the questions for now. Um, do you have any more of your presentation? No, that's all. Okay, thank you so much. I'm now going to move over to Cynthia Parker Kirk. So, Cynthia, if you could um, share your screen with us, please.
Hi, Cynthia, can you can you share your screen? Now, Cynthia seems to be having, oh, here we go. Yeah. Great, okay, now we can see your screen. Um, and we can hear you, so you can proceed, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, my name is Cynthia Parker Kirk, and I am Department of, represent the Department of Transportation, and I'm a contract administrator. So what we have is just basically some of the jobs that are available right now in our fiscal year 20, we are in the first quarter. So some of these jobs are being advertised at the moment. You can always find um, the jobs that are available on uh, in our local newspapers, like the Baltimore Sun, the Afro, Baltimore Times, and the Daily Record. As well as you can always go on to email and marketplace, which is now called Emma. And all that information is on the Baltimore City, um, if you baltimorecity.gov website, um, getting all the listings of various um, websites that you can go to that can help you within, you know, learning how to um, see what jobs are available. Right now, what we have is the Department of Transportation is responsible for planning, designing, building, and maintenance of 4,700 lanes of miles of roadways, seven miles of interstate highways, approximately 298 bridges, 36,000 miles of sidewalk, 456 miles of alleys, 80,000 plus street lights. Um, that's a big thing now, you know, with the street lights and the cameras, making it more safety, um, more conducive for traffic, as well as um, implementing more bike lanes that are now being um, done, you know, throughout the city. So as you can see, there's other things that on here as well. Um, our presentation is always available for you to look at. Um, right now, in our, on our on-call projects, on-call projects are usually locally funded. Um, if you're locally funded, you have to be a, um, a prime has to be able to bring on MBEs or WBEs, minority business or women-owned business. Um, so if you are trying to do work within the city, you can always go to um, EMBU, which is minority, participate, minority Women Business Participation, and register to be able to do business with the city. So these are just some of the jobs that are about to um, be advertised. Um, it's determined what the, uh, what the project number will be, but the job will consist of on-call highway design and related work, bridge design and related work and construction management services for transportation projects. Now, this one just happens to be, I do apologize, is a federal aid. So with federal contracts, you have to be a DBE. And that is for disadvantaged business. Um, you know, you have to be able to go on the Maryland State website to become, making sure that you're um, actually certified. You also have to, um, contact the boards of commission, office of the boards and commissions, because you have to go through them as well as in order to do business within the city. Um, right now we have a uh, transit projects and I do apologize because these are things that presentations that are given to me if they've already been, this one says third quarter, so this should not have already been advertised. So we're looking at the third quarter, which will be sometime towards the first of the year. Um, so we have some bridge projects that are about to come up, Persistent Street, Hawkins Point, and Phoenix Road Bridge. We have some construction projects as well. The um, assessment, uh, restoration, transportation, installation of railroad caboose, and the Sharp Latin Hall Streetscape. I think this one is, um, a little bit ahead of time. I think that this one may be get ready to be advertised soon. And again, that that information is always in the uh, local newspapers. Our bids go out on Fridays in regard to um, when you can purchase the bids. And on Wednesday is our bid openings, which allows you to know who, what contractor won the bids as well. We have some alley and footway projects that are 
coming up. Some curb repair, 88 ramp repair, concrete slab repair, alley reconstruction, and footway repairs. We have a couple traffic projects that are about to come up. Uh, again, the city is implementing better traffic flow, more conducive for pedestrians to walk, as well as safety routes to school and bike lane um, areas that are conducive for bike for bike for bike riders to to do and be safe while they're doing it while they're riding. We have conduit projects and we have some resurfacing projects. This is a list of contact persons within the Department of Transportation that you can contact um, if you have questions about jobs that you may see. They can only give limited information because we cannot give out information in regards to subs or advocate for other construction companies. Um, within each contract or agreement that has some of the jobs, there are goals that have to be met. That's why the city is really implementing minority and women participation. Um, a prime cannot bid on a project unless they bring on minority uh, participation. Participation. A lot of the goals sometimes are 23 and 10, 27 and 10. So it's really, you know, it's fairly easy for new smaller businesses to um, jump on board. You just have to make sure that you become pre-qualified and yet you register to be able to do the businesses with the city. Um, you don't have to have a, uh, your main office does not have to be in Baltimore, but you have to have a base within the city. Um, normally we do, um, the city does do some outreach programs, of course, during COVID, a lot of things are visual, visual. What you can always do is contact our minority office and they can, you know, submit your name. So when we do have outreach where you can actually get hands on and actually speak to some people, you can, um, be aware of those events that are going to come up. So hopefully by next year, we normally do it in the spring and the fall. Uh, the fiscal year starts within the city in July. So we just, um, we're into the, this is uh, September already. <laughs> so we are, you know, just in, in our first quarter. So if you have any questions, I'm um, also when in, in order for you can also or when you are looking to find out whether or not you would like to uh, participate in some of the jobs, there are um, pre-meetings, uh, pre pre-bid meetings for construction. You can come in, you know, meet, do some networking, meet some of the people that may be bidding on the project as a sub. This is a great opportunity to meet some of the primes to, um, you know, promote your business and see if you can jump on board, you know, to become one part of the, um, of their team. I always tell uh, minority uh, businesses that, small businesses that it's still never too late. You know, you can always go and find out what contracts have been awarded, what the subs, you know, what their goals were, what they, you know, what their, um, how they were able to win the bid and then just increase, you know, what their opportunity of how they were able to do the business to maybe promote your business one step further. And so if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Thank you, Cynthia. Yes, we have some questions. Okay, this one's from Alexander and he asked, does your department have disabled veteran opportunities? Um, again, I, I don't think it's so much just for veterans. Um, and I do apologize, um, I'm getting some answers. So no, we do not. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he has a follow up. Do you have information for the boards of commissions? I can um, give you a, a number that you can actually contact them. Uh, let me just see, I do apologize. 
That's okay. But, um, it's 410-396-6883. Okay, could you repeat that and I'll type it in the chat box? Certainly, 410-396-6883. And you can okay. always, um, mostly, I mean, not mostly, but all of the agencies within the city government, if you go to BaltimoreCity.gov, every department, every division, there is there are links to their website for, its, for that particular division, as well as a phone number, um, with a lot of agencies still working from home. Um, they, you know, they do answer the phone, as well as they have email information that you can um, email them and they will respond. Okay, thanks. This question is from Regina and she asks, um, you mentioned earlier that if you want to register as an MBE to go to a website, could you please repeat it? Yes, it is. It's the acronym is MWBOO and it stands for Bit Minority Women Business Opportunity Office. Okay, I'm typing that out too. Thank you. Um, okay, what uh, NIGP class or category would graphic design and programming fall under? Within our division, um, that would not really for graphic designer would not. Um, and let some of some like, for instance, the um, the uh, mural they had in the street um, that comes through planning. I mean, if there's any type of graphic that would probably fall under um, under that category, but not within construction or so much design. You know, uh, design. Okay. Uh, next question. You mentioned that your main office does not have to be in Baltimore, but you have to have a base in the city. Correct. I, am, I am a Maryland business, but I am not located in Baltimore city limits. Does that mean I cannot do any contracts for the city? No, um, they have expanded uh, this, like Carroll County. Um, I, do, I don't have the list with me on uh, this. Actually, if you go onto the um, that Minority Women Business Opportunity Office on the website, it will tell you. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I might have one. Hold on one second. Um, it's Baltimore City, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, Carroll County, Harford County, Howard County, Queen Anne's. Okay, thank you. Um, another question from Raphael. Because this is federally, this is DOT and federally funded, is it safe to assume that your set aside are with Maryland DOT codes under SBE, correct? Those are your set aside and goals. Is this correct? Hmm. Not sure. You might want to rephrase that question, Raphael. Not quite, don't quite understand that one. So if you could like to retype that, make it a bit shorter um, and so, to the point. A lot of, I think, what they're trying to ask are the goals. So the goals are set. What happens is the federal, we get, you know, funding from federal government. So they set a guideline as to um, the participation and they set, you know, the goals. You know, they're set by the state. We don't have control over that. Okay. I don't see any more questions. Arthenia, do you want to ask either Kevin or Cynthia anything that you think perhaps we may have missed or you think that businesses often ask you about? Yep. You'll have to unmute yourself, Arthenia. Okay, you can hear me now. Um, so I think one of the things that I run into quite often with uh, small business owners is the fact that they don't know completely how to register to receive the services. Um, so I want them to understand that most of these uh, requirements from what I understand are advertised in email and marketplace, which is called Emma. Uh, they want to just make sure that they have their certifications to make sure that they are self-contracting opportunities available. I think both presenters have presented a wealth of information 
Uh, it's up to the small business owner to follow up to make sure that they follow the recommendations of our presenters. And of course, they can always contact me uh, by email or phone. Thank you, Yasmin. Thanks, Althania. Okay, um, one more question. How would a minority owned business receive opportunities to pilot a new office? I'm sorry, to pilot a new program with the city? Um, if it's something outside of um, D, uh, DOT regarding construction design, if they're just advocating to want to think that the city has, um, or they have a business that would be beneficial to the city, they can always contact um, the mayor's office. They are, um, they, he does have different agencies that um, that help with, you know, people that want to advocate for something um, in regard to small businesses. Um, I would, I cannot think of the department, but if you call, the city has a city hall operator. It's four one zero. 396-3100 and you can, they will be able to tell them, you know, they want to speak to someone in the mayor's office that um, they want to advocate for a business or some type of opportunity for the city that would be beneficial and they would give it to one of his um, deputies, you know, one of the deputies within the mayor's office. Also, they can contact the small business office as well, I'm trying to see if I have a number. What's the permission? I apologize, I don't, but that 396-3100, if they ask for the number for small business within the city, they would be able to give them that number. Okay, that's great, thank you. I don't see any other questions um, for you, Cynthia, so, I'm going to go ahead and move over to Arthenia. So, Arthenia, if you could share your slideshow, please. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but we, we need to see your slideshow. Oh, I just did. You can't see it? No, nope. you need to share your screen. And then oh. um, I'll let you know when we can see your screen. Oh, shoot. Oh, can't go back, Yasmin. What do you see now? Um, I have slideshow. Okay. All right. Tell you what. Um, luckily, I have the presentation to hand. So I am going to share my screen and then Arthenia, you can just talk and I'll follow, follow your words. Okay. All right. Thank you. So tell me when you can see mine. Can you see the slideshow, Arthenia? Yes. Okay, you can go ahead. Okay, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. And uh, again, welcome to the Maryland PTAC. I will be presenting marketing strategies for government contractors. Some of this information that you will be able to use if you are a federal government contractor, as well as a local and state contractor. Also, if you are new to marketing, hopefully these marketing strategies will help you to build your business. Anything that you do not understand or you would like for me to explain further, please don't hesitate to, to ask me or either email me as well. Thank you, Yasmin. Okay, so we're gonna talk about marketing and market research, which is so important. I'll talk about different tools that you can use for marketing um, as well as market research. We'll talk about how marketing research help your business. 
how does it expand your business? I always simply say most of the time that marketing is a full-time job. So if you're looking to build your business, it's very hard if you are a one-person operation uh, because marketing is 40 hours a day. You have to respond to solicitations. You have to look for solicitations. You have to be available to respond in a timely manner. We'll also talk about federal government market research. We'll talk about tools such as federal procurement data system. We'll talk about what contracts are expiring, who the potential contractors may be, who's your competition. These are items that you should know. We'll also talk about market review analysis, how to find potential federal customers. Okay, Yasmin. Our mission statement is to increase contracting activity between small business, prime government contractors, and the local, state, and federal governments. We specialize in government marketing strategies. These are some of the regulations and registrations that we do help with, uh, email and marketplace, system for award management, better known as SAM, WOSB, EDWSB certifications, as well as veteran certifications uh, for the SDVOSB, VOSB. I heard a couple of questions regarding SDVOSB, which is a federal verification. It is not a certification, it is a ver verification. It will not uh, guarantee you contracts. You still have to bid and be responsible and responsive. Uh, we assist with GSA schedule, which is a contracting vehicle. Again, it does not guarantee contracts. It is just a vehicle that the government does use on the state and federal level. We assist with bid and proposal uh, assistance, pre and post award audits, business assessment and marketing strategies. We also specialize in workshops and training classes, uh, which Yasmin does a great job for our organization in planning uh, for your success. Thank you, Yasmin. Other services that we offer, business assessment. We do a great job with business assessments. If we don't feel um, that your company is ready for a large contract awards, we will recommend that you do subcontracting first. Build up your past performance. Make sure that you have adequate references. Make sure that you have a line of credit or you accept the government's purchase orders. Stay within the contract monetary amount that you know your company can handle. Do not bid on a million dollar contract if you can simply only handle uh, simplified acquisitions or $25,000 contracts. Know your limit. Our funding is through a cooperative agreement with DOD, Defense Logistics Agency, Maryland Department of Labor, Licensing and Regulation, and the University of Maryland. Okay, so what is marketing? Marketing is defined as everything that you, as a small business owner, do to promote your product or your service to your customers and it meets their need. Today, you have heard several opportunities presented by our presenters. So you're going to have to come up with a good plan. Uh, I heard procurement forecasts mentioned a couple of times. So now is the time for you to start uh, working on your procurement forecast because there, the city certainly does have needs uh, for your expertise and you need to determine that. Uh, market is a group of people who are or will be your customers. For instance, it may be the Department of Defense, Army, Navy, and Air Force. We at the PTAC can help you find your customers. However, it is up to you to market to your customers. You must have the correct marketing tools, 
such as a capability statement, a website, not a website that's under construction, but a website where a government agency should be able to go to your website and see what services that you may provide. What certifications do you have? What contracting vehicles do you have? What are your next codes? Should be on your website. It should list some of your customers. It should list your past performance. Whether you are a reliable contractor, maybe you want to also on your website say what makes you different. A short uh, elevator speech would be very helpful. If you do not have these particular tools, in my opinion, you may want to wait before you start advertising to the federal government or marketing to the federal government or the local and state. However, keep in mind that the local and state spend a lot of money. So if you feel you're not ready for the feds, do local and state. Don't forget that school systems spend a lot of money. Uh, so marketing research is a process that is used to find out if you have a market. Again, who are your customers? Do you have a marketing plan? If you are truly a one person operation or two uh, people uh, comp size company, make sure that you only market to one or two agencies. Get to know the agency's mission statement. Get to know how much they spend per year. So much information you can find off of USA spending. So that uh, the federal government right now is um, winding down their end of the fiscal year for 2020. It will end the end of September. So the federal government right now is spending a not lot of money. Some have met their goals for this fiscal year and some have not. I urge any one of you to have an up-to-date capability statement. Make sure that you have it critiqued by a PTAC counselor and contact the small business offices, OSTABU offices, and procurement officers to try and get as many opportunities as you can before the end of the fiscal year. Jasmine? Okay, market research is to find out as much as possible we talked about looking at what contracts that will be expiring, what contracts will be coming up for renewal, what contracts that are going to be out for uh, competition. So you want to determine again, if your company has the management skills, does it have program skills? Can you deliver on time and within the government's budget? What needs to be changed in your organization? Is it your personnel? Do you have adequate personnel? Is it your management or marketing material? Marketing research should not stop when your plan is completed on paper. Just because you have a business plan or a marketing plan, that is just the beginning. The plan will need to be updated on a regular basis to determine if changes need to be made. So you need to determine if you need to change personnel. Do you have up-to-date resumes on file that you may contact someone in case you are awarded a contract? Do you have the equipment to complete the contract? All very, very important. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Agencies must document their market research findings in an adequate manner to support their acquisition decision. So you will find, especially in the federal government, uh, if they're looking to put a procurement aside, set it aside for a small business, then they must show that they've gone out seeking a small business that can do the work. A lot of times they will ask you to send in your capability statement. Uh, to support that they can actually set aside an acquire, an, a, a requirement. Now, if you are a small business, you want to be able to uh, let a contracting officer know that you're small, 
if you're a woman owned, if you are in a hub zone, if you're a service disabled veteran. These are set aside type programs that will limit your competition, which will give you a better opportunity uh, to be competitive. Sources sought. This is when the contracting officer will review acquisitions to determine if they can be set aside for small business. So if you're looking at, uh, uh, I want to say, uh, federal procurement opportunities, but that's no longer the name. It's beta.sam.gov. Uh, you will find opportunities where contracting officers are looking for capability statements. Please respond. A capability statement can be one to three pages long so that the contracting officer can set aside a requirement. It's a great opportunity to get your foot inside of a door. Don't give up. It may take 18 months to get a government contract, but be persistent. If the federal government's too large for you to uh, handle, you don't understand the FAR regulation, you have counselors that will be able to help you. So reference to FAR 19.501 states that the contracting officer shall perform market and document why a small business set aside is inappropriate when an acquisition is not set aside for a small business. So you wanna make sure that the contracting officers um, and contract specialists are doing their jobs. And remember this FAR regulation, um, it is there to help you as a small business owner. So become familiar with the FAR. In case you do not know, the FAR is the Bible's regulation, is what the government does abide by. Okay, Yasmin. What does market research accomplish? Oh, it's accomplished many, many things. It identifies your customer who will buy your product or your service, your market niche. It will identify your competition and how will it fit in. So you also want to know who your competitors are. What do they offer that you don't? Why would a federal agency or local state government award a contract to you and not your competitor? What makes your company stand out? Is it price? Price is determined to be, is your price determined to be competitive and cover all costs plus profit? Now, when you're considering your costs, have you considered GNA, your general and administrative costs? Have you considered overhead? What are your hourly rates and what type of contract will your contract be awarded under? Is it a task order? Is it a purchase order? Is it a delivery order? Is it a full and open competition? What is your competitive edge? Again, what makes your product or your service better or different from your competition? Location is so important. Where will you sell your product or service to reach the most customers? Maybe you just want to sell local. Maybe you want to just do the state of Maryland, or maybe you want to branch out to Delaware or do the Beltway. Make sure that's important and make sure that you are able to deliver. So here are some questions marketing research answers. Where do I find this information? Um, the city did an excellent job today telling you where to find bid opportunities for them. Uh, make sure that you attend the monthly trainings that they offer. What you sell describes your product and your service. And who are you going to sell it to? I can't stress that enough. I can't stress enough to know who your competition is. I'm finding now as I review solicitations with my clients, which are mostly service based, that you really need to know how to read the solicitation. You need to know whether you want to bid or do a no response bid. You need to know how to read the amendments. What do the amendments state? 
and how will it change your proposal? What is your marketing potentials? What do I want to do with marketing? Do I just want to use marketing as a practice to be uh, ready next year? Or am I trying to win a contract now? You need to determine that. Uh, Yasmin, do we have any questions at this time? Uh, let's have a look. No, not at this time. Um, and we have about 10 minutes left. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Next. Okay, types of information to research. There are several areas that need to be researched to determine the who, very important, how, where of your buyers and potential buyers. These areas can be described as trend overview, market descriptions and sizes, the statistical data of the target market, their needs, their desires, the buyer's opinion of competition, features that want to be seen in the product, and benefits they expect to receive from products or service. Uh, let me say that the federal government does not like to go out and recompete uh, a contract or solicitation because a contractor was unable to fulfill the contract. So when you are awarded a contract, make sure that you are able to deliver on time and within budget. So you want to be responsible and responsive. Jasmine? Some sources that provide important data about potential federal customers. One, which is one of my favorites, but it's a lot of, lot of information and it's a lot, a lot of research. It's a lot of reports, but it is very, very helpful. It is the Federal Procurement Data System, better known as FPDS. It is part of the U.S. General Administration, better known as GSA. Uh, it is where you should be able to go and find out what contracts that will be expiring, who the current contractor is, what is the current contract amount, and is it a set aside or is it a full and open competition? Uh, if you're looking for federal opportunities or sometimes even state opportunities, I urge all of you to look at beta.sam every day if possible. It will give you the ability to browse active procurement notices. Also, you will find in here um, contracting officers' names, specialists, so that you can reach out to them, let them know that you are a small business, what are your services that you offer? Uh, <laughs> excuse me, again, whether it's gonna be a set aside, uh, the agency, office, location. Here's a wonderful website if you just want to market to military installations. I know a lot of you do uh, perform different types of services. Now you're doing different types of products. Uh, to help the federal government in this in the state in this critical position that we are in now. So reach out to your military installations and uh, market to them. Again, you want to ask yourself, who are my customers? There are three customers you should target with your marketing effort. Procurers, including the contracting officers and specialists. Influencers, those are your program managers. It may be a little difficult reaching, but don't give up. Be persistent. I hear it all the time where uh, program managers or contracting officers don't return emails or they don't return uh, phone calls, which we're all working in a different environment now. So you may have to be a little patient, but don't give up. The end users, who are the end users? Pay close attention to when you see an announcement, generally it will have a contracting officer's name or an email or a phone number. Follow up with them. 
maybe it's an opportunity that's advertised that you will not be able to qualify for now, but send in your capability statement. And also all through the year, you want to continue to keep your name um, in front of your customer. Very, very important. Okay, any questions? <clears throat> yes, we do. We have okay. a question from Ramo who asks, can we bid on federal contracts if we're a startup? Yes and no. Um, if you are a startup, the government generally wants to see two to three years of past performance. And now we're seeing more and more where they want you to have past performance within their agency. So what is the solution? Seek subcontracting opportunities. Again, you may want to start on the local or state levels to get that past performance the government's asking for. Okay, uh, we don't, oh, here's another one. Is beta.sam free or do you need to pay to get access? No, that is no charge to you, fortunately. So <laughs> you've got to make sure that you're um, at least devoting one hour per day to review those solicitations and whether you can respond. Uh, at this moment, I just give a plug for the Maryland PTAC. We do have our bid match service, which we offer uh, for $120 per year. And it certainly will give you notices of, and it'll come directly to your email account where you can do solicitations as well. So this, this will save you time and effort as well. And that information is on our website. Okay, a question um, from Sadaf who asks, how do we get a subcontract? You work with your PTAC counselor uh, we have a list of prime contractors that we recommend all the time. We also look at your past performance before we make recommendations to make sure that you are in fact ready for subcontracting opportunities. So you got to do your homework as well. Okay. Okay, that seems to be all the questions. Um, so I would like to thank everybody for participating today and particularly to our guest speakers, Cynthia Parker Kirk and Kevin Lunsford. We really do appreciate your participation in events like this uh, because it's so important for um, small businesses to be able to put a face to a name and not be intimidated about contacting um, agencies and representatives to find out how they can do business. Um, on a state, local and federal level. So I would like to thank everybody so much. We've done it all in an hour and there was a wealth of information shared. I will be sending the um, presentations out shortly. And then the video will probably be on our website either by the end of today or sometime tomorrow. So you can watch it again if you would like to. And we'd like to say everybody stay safe and please do keep attending our webinars. We are booking webinars um, indefinitely now because of the COVID situation. And 99% of our webinars are free. So please do take advantage of this great opportunity to invest in your education. So thanks everybody. And um, we we'll hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.